All right. So I have another uh, buddy drill for you. Welcome back, Jube. Thank you for your help. Um, but before we get to that, there was a couple questions on the bind versus the gain constraint concept. So remember, they're going to use similar functions. Jube, hold your sword up for me in a high guard. Uh, edge out like a good boy. There you go. So, uh, don't worry about the dagger yet. Just going off the bind versus the constraint, I'm going to use a high guard for demonstration purposes. Remember that uh, we're working on a game of leverage here. We're playing a game of leverage. When I bind, coming around my opponent's blade and throwing, right, I am building a... Uh, oh, poor baby. I am winning the game of leverage. she okay? Yeah. She shut her hand on the door? Yeah. Poor baby. Alright, I'm winning the game of leverage by using my opponent's initial response to resist, right? I know. So when I come in, he resists, I'm able to hold the blade, and that's how we get a bind. And again, like I said, bind can be done in a variety of ways. There's not one way to bind. But that's the concept behind bind, right? Now, uh, binding is normally going to be, hold your sword up, in any maneuver where I take my opponent's sword and maintain that contact to uh, uh, go through with an attack. That's when I'm doing a bind type move. Versus a gain or constrain type move where let's say, uh, let me get a little bit of range here. Every time I throw to center mass, Jube crossbody parries, right? So he parry force, hip on me, and I'm going to adjust you slightly. Right there, remember, always stay in front of you. Ready? No, it was good. Right? Parry four, boom. There you go, keep that tip up. There you go. Again, parry four. Now we've built this pattern. Every time I'm coming in, he's throwing that efficient crossbody parry, right? Now this is one example of how you can use a uh, 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 gain over a bind, right? If I know he's doing this kind of move, I can throw my shot to provoke that parry. But instead of following through with the shot, I'm going to turn my shot into a wall of steel, a gain, right? So as, on guard, as I begin my shot, instead of, don't move yet, instead of following through with my shot, I'm going to make my shot look every minute like it's going to be the same shot, but instead of throwing, parry when I go. Instead of throwing, I come to a parry myself. Now I am using my leverage to force his blade out, right? That was the same parry Jube wanted to do the rest of the moves, but because I put more of my forte, on guard, near more of his feeble, and I commit my body weight into that movement, I am able to prevent his sword from finishing the parry. 90% of the time, the first thing someone does when this happens, and Jube can't do it because he's stuck, most of the time what they do is they run. And the second they try to step back or turn around and not pay attention anymore is when you can go. Right? That's an example of a constraint or a, a gain in uh, context, right? When I might use it exactly. And again, on guard, this is not something that has to be done in a... Uh, a there's a concept, not a move. Jube's in a low guard. And every time I throw at his hand, he circles up to a six, right? So I throw at his hand, circles up to six, like a good boy, just like that. Boom, and he's got that good coming down using that same concept. When I throw that hand shot, I come down and gain his blade out the gate, right? I am putting my weight behind it, getting that solid. It is done. He starts to run, boom, I follow, right? He can't run, so he's just going to stand there. Uh, the only other thing I'm forgetting is make sure you use your offhand appropriately. Same thing with when I had you here, sorry. Boom, when I had him here, my off arm should have been the appropriate four position. Because if he did disengage, I'd be ready for that. Okay. I hope that clears up a bit of that concept. Remember, on guard, binding is... Getting that initial, he doesn't want me to push him away, using my leverage to win. Because remember, uh, for those of you that haven't seen this before, 
Leverage is what wins with these. Don't use the flat, use the edge, right? And remember feeble forte. So if Jubei and I come edge to edge, uh, true edge. Now, I've been doing this a while and I work out, right? So when we come edge to edge, and we're gonna go tip to tip. Now push my sword out of the way. Stay on my tip, stay on my tip. And push my sword out of the way. Now it's a battle of strength. Keep going. This is who is who is stronger, and I've been doing this longer, and I got the muscles. It's just a bad matter of strength. Same thing. If we end up down here by the guard, and we're pushing each other, push me out of the way. This is a battle of the roof. This is a battle of who is stronger. Who is stronger, right? You don't want to get into a battle of strength with a rapier. There's no point, okay? Unless you're super strong and you're trying to, like, overpower your opponent. But... You don't want to get there anyway, because if your opponent is skilled enough, they can change a battle of strength into a battle of leverage. Now here, we've already shown that I've got the muscles to, uh, to beat Jubei, but if he gets more of my feeble on more of his forte, right? And here, we'll even come a little high. Now, his job is to not let me move. I'm just gonna push him out of the way and he's gonna stop me, right? So when I start pushing, Stop me, stop me, and I got two hands on twisting uh, full body. I can't move him because he has won the battle of leverage, right? So, on guard. Gain bind, battle of leverage. In the bind, I use the initial resistance of my opponent to put that leverage off balance. In a gain, I am uh, establishing a... Uh, a leverage imbalance out the gate, right? I'm just going to hold my opponent's sword in a point of leverage superiority. So gain, I'm holding them out in leverage superiority. Bind, I'm initiating a touch to cause resistance and abusing leverage mechanics to make my attack. I don't know if that cleared it up, but I hope so. All right, today we have a quick practice drill for, uh, for a buddy where we're working, remember, we have our four concepts, right? Lunge, parry, recover. Get that parry before you come back. We've got to work on that one. Uh, step back and parry. Every time you block or parry, you should be stepping back. Um, oh, lead with the edge. Always, lead, And I just showed you those binds on guard. Yes. If I tried binding him with the flat of my blade, flat, not edge, but flat, and I come at a good leverage point, right? And I continue trying to go when I resist Jebs, he starts to win anyway. I can't. They can wait. Okay. So uh, you don't want to. You don't want to use the flat, right? You lead with the edge. Always lead with the edge. Okay. And our last one is we play by that sense of touch. We're playing by feel. So today's drill is another play-by-feel rule. And again, if you're working with a partner, always respect your safety. If you are worried at all that a blade is going to come at your face, especially your eyes, get a mask, get safety goggles, get something. Don't go to the hospital right now. Like we said before, it's a bad time. Take care of yourself. Now, I've been working with Jubei a long time. And I've been doing this... 18 years now? 19, almost 20 years ago. So I have a lot of experience with doing this. So I know exactly how to work with him and I feel comfortable with him. On guard. Now, today's practice is going to be the idea of gaining their blade with the dagger. Now I'm not going to throw the shot because that's just going to be the notional one. But it's going to be on guard. Gaining their blade with the dagger from wherever they're at. So if he's in a high guard here, I want to try to get that initial gain. Got it? Now, if I don't feel this, right, Jubei disengages under, I have to be able to go where his blade will go next, right? So that's the point of this drill. You can go ahead and drop the dagger and we'll join in a minute. <clears throat> so if he's in a high guard, I want to be out of range. And now watch this. Swing your sword at the jibs. Without moving. Stay where you're at, swing your sword full extension. Out of range! I'm out of range. See the smartness here? On guard. So I'm going to lean in, try to gain his blade, right? And try to gain his blade, try to gain his blade. Now he's going to disengage the other way, got it? 
So when I come into game of blade, he disengages, and I have to immediately, the second I don't feel his sword, switch to the other angle, right? It's also a good drill to do, and I prefer doing it this way. Go to a low guard, Jubs. So in a low guard, right, I'm going to extend to see if I gain a play. Now here's when I throw. Make sense? But he's going to try to disengage it. So I come in, ready? And he makes I disengage. <laughs> ready? Comes in, makes I disengage. There you go, the quickest disengage, right? So if I'm leaning, and I know, and remember, this should come with a on guard. Should come with a in slow motion, don't do anything. I come in, I gain his blade, and I make the lunge, right? That's how this should go. But we're working on that play by feel. So don't worry about getting the extension of the lunge yet. You can build up to that and put on more protective gear. Right now, get that feeling. Take a low guard, Jones. Now, change it up in your mind. Don't always do the same one. But on some of them, come around when I gain you in the dagger, right? And there's the trick. Don't be all sneaky as a buddy, right? Just think like, you know... I'm going to go two and then go, and then I'm going to go three and then go, and then I'm going to go one and then go, you know, like change that. Ready? So I'm out of range and I come in, touch, okay, come in, oh, then I didn't feel it, right? I had that moment where I got the touch and it wasn't there, I had to transition immediately. Ready? So again, coming in, oh, I feel him. Oh, didn't feel him. Ready? Uh, take, keep in the low guard for now because I'm working on that one. So I'm finding my angle, coming in, got him. Coming in, got him, boom. Now, when I come into it, immediate disengage, right? So I come in, oh, didn't feel it immediately, have to transition, right? Again. Coming in, boom, didn't feel it. Coming in, boom, didn't feel it, right? That's the idea of this drill. And, like I said, change it up on guard. High guard. You do the sound high guard, too, because if I want to scoop him out, this is my safest one, right? If I'm going to scoop him out and I don't feel him, I have to immediately transition to that second parry. Scoop, boom. And, oh, I got him, I got him. Oh, I don't got him. Okay. This is the idea behind the drill. Now, like I said, you can build this up into more things. You can build this up into more things. And if your buddy's learning too, he can do the same drill. So if he's going to gain my sword, and then he doesn't feel my sword, it's transitioning to his next opening, right? Point the tip a little more at me. There you go. Again, ready? You got it. Recover. Just come back to one guard. Oh. Do it again. You didn't get it. Ah, see? You were using your eyes. You were thinking about your eyes. Don't think about your eyes. Think about your dagger. If you don't feel me, where'd I go? Got it? Ready? Get it. Got it. Okay, reset and do it again. Well, I'm resisting. Good job. Aha! Feel that difference? That's where we're building. Building that play-by-feel. Jubei's a great... Because I've been practicing this, right? I might look pretty good doing it. This is something new to him. He hasn't been doing this one. And you can see that moment of, oh, geez, I gotta get there. It is changing his practice habits. He has to think now. Oh, dear, I have to play-by-feel. Got it? So let's do uh, ten more each, and we'll call it a day. So you would do five high... Five low, and then I'll do five high, five low, we'll be done. Um, you want me to start? Okay. Ready? So I'm coming in. That felt good. Oh, immediate. Thank you, Jeff. That was perfect. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Three. Yep. Yeah, okay. Four. There we go. And there we go. That was five. Now I'll do five low. Ready? Okay, bring it. Shot. I think that was four. One more for fun. Fire! Thank you, Jobs. Your turn. Here, use my dagger. Nice. I like my dagger. You're going to inherit that thing soon. Okay, ready? Do five high. Good. Low. 
good counter. Now look, you're bringing it in, bring it out. Like a carry seven. Oh, yeah. Right? On guard with your sword. Seven. Carry seven with your sword. With your sword. Carry seven. Remember, not parry slower, parry seven, right? Oh, yeah. Same thing with the dagger. When you do that dagger parry, yes, just like that. Beautiful. Okay, two more. Boom, like that. All right, careful. There you go. One more, one more. That's how it looks. Bam. Okay, um, something more to work on. And hopefully you're noticing that Juve and I are staying a good, safe distance away from each other. We know each other well. If I were worried about this, I'd put a mask on either of us like that, okay? <clears throat> now, um, remember that play by feel. This is a hard concept to get. And again, you can always blindfold yourself a little bit, up your game some. Uh, if you're going to blindfold yourself, probably one of you should have a mask on. But um, uh, building that habit is critical, right? Building that sense of feel will always beat your vision, okay? Your vision has a longer connection to make the uh, uh, mental eye, hand, everything go. Your sense of touch, quicker connection. Immediately nothing, boom, transition. All right. Enjoy yourselves, everyone. Talk to you soon.